Hi, this is Chris with Stupid Raisins, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to remove wind noise in Final Cut Pro. Get rid of all the noise, 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 noise! I'm gonna share with you how to reduce wind noise in your clips using a variety of tools, including the denoiser, and then we're gonna take a look at different filming techniques we can use the next time we're shooting outside. Let's go check that out. All right, so we're here in Final Cut Pro. We're trying to remove wind from our footage. So I'm gonna play this clip that I got on my iPhone outside today. Very windy day. Wind, wind test. test. One, One, two, three. three. Four, Four, five, six. All right, you can hear in there a lot of just the little bit of wind in the background, as well as the like the actual wind, like almost like hitting that mic. I wanna say right off the bat, that when it comes to wind, noise, and other things, while we can reduce it, it's really baked into a lot of your footage, and it's just like inter intermixed, intermingled with your vocals, with your audio. So while we wanna preserve the voice and get rid of the noise, we're gonna have to find a balance between the two. You can't have one without you know affecting the other. First thing, I just wanna prep our workspace. I'm gonna click on this here. This, you may not know, is a button and it brings up our audio levels on the side. Um, I prefer to have them shrunk down to the side, but still there to be able to reference so that as we see Wind test. the audio rolling in, we can see where it's peaking at. Okay, so the first thing we can do, you, uh, and Final Cut may have already done this when you imported the footage, is we're gonna go up to the inspector, and right here, you can already see it's detected some problems. If you don't see anything appearing here, it's, it's gray or it says no analysis has been done, click this, little wand, this magic wand here, and it will fix your audio or what it what it deems necessary to fix it. And in this case, it was like, okay, I can hear the noise. Let's put some noise removal on this. So let's see what that did. Wind test. One, two, three. Wind test. One, two, three. Yeah, so you can hear it took out a lot of that. Now, 50% may be too much for your vocals. The vocals in that footage, while you may remove a lot of the noise, the vocals, you create some artifacts, you create some awkward roll off of the, of where, where the voice is like cut off a little too soon. Play around with this. Sometimes you wanna stick to like, you know, five, 10, 15% if your audio is pretty good. But if it's a severe situation like this one, we may wanna even increase it. I'm gonna see what 70 sounds like. Wind test. One, two, three. So that sounds a lot better. Um, this this is a pretty severe case, so I'm gonna keep this pretty high. Now above this, if you, you've got the loudness, which if you know compressor, probably don't wanna mess with loudness. It's, it's more basic use of the uh, compressor tool. So what it'll do is it'll just help balance audio so from the, the lower audio moments to the higher louder audio moments, it'll kind of balance those together a little bit, make them more uniform. When you try to make things more uniform, it'll often bring the noise with it. So you wanna be very careful with how much you add in, in these cases. Uh, for now, we're gonna remove the loudness and bring in the channel EQ. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna click up here in the uh, inspector window. We're gonna come down to channel EQ and hit this advanced menu here. We're gonna hit Shift Z so we can see our full timeline here. There's a really cool feature. If you hit Command L, it'll turn on and off the loop. You can see the play button there uh, that's changing. So we'll turn it on loop. And then while we're in this channel EQ, Test. we're gonna click on Analyzer. And we'll see where all of our audio is coming in at. Test. So what I wanna do is I wanna select one of these. We cover this in greater detail in another tutorial. But we're literally just listening one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're listening for some bad frequencies that we may want to remove. So we'll just click on each of these, remove what you like, sweep back and forth. All right, now that we've got those basic uh, channel EQs done, we did some sweeping of the frequencies there. I'm gonna click on this here. It's gonna remove a lot of those lower frequencies where that oh, that low wind sound is coming from. And we're also gonna pull from the higher ones too. Just remove that out of there. All right, so we got that a lot more balanced, got rid of some, some bad frequencies. Uh, you can adjust this uh, further if you'd like and boost some of the, the better frequencies. 
At Stupid Raisins, we do our best to cut through the noise. We share new videos like this all the time to help with your Final Cut Pro projects. Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you can get notified when we release our next video. So next thing we're gonna look at is the denoiser. One, two, three. Right. And right now the default preset doesn't seem to be working that great. So I'm going to click on the white noise filter. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's sounding a lot better. We can go in here and make some adjustments. So just a couple things about these, because this, this can get a little, a little complicated, but just to help you out with a couple things. Signals that fall below this level are reduced by the denoiser. So anything below 50, the denoiser is going to reduce anything below this threshold. The other thing we can mess around with is reduce. In reduce, this sets the amount of noise reduction applied to signals that fall below the threshold. So when reducing noise, you know, uh, we gotta remember that each 6 dB reduction is equivalent to having, cutting in half the volume level, and each 6 dB increase is equivalent to doubling the volume level. So this sets the amount to ha how much reduction of the uh, audio levels are we wanting on uh, anything that is below, in this case, 46, negative 46 dB. So this will tell us how much we want to reduce that by. And then the noise type. So this determines the type of noise that you want to reduce. So a value of zero equals white noise. Positive values change to pink noise, which is harmonic noise, uh, greater bass response. Negative values, if you come down this way, Negative values change to blue noise, which is more like a, a hiss, hissy tape noise. Negative, value, negative values change to more blue values, which is more of like hiss, tape, you know, that sort of noise. So then we, so that was the, um, that was the main controls. Now on the smoothing part of things, once we've gotten these adjusted up here, we can then come here to smooth these out a bit. So the frequencies, this adjusts how uh, smoothing is applied to neighboring frequencies. Uh, if denoiser recognizes that only noise is present on a certain frequency band, the higher you set this frequency parameter, the more it changes the neighboring frequency bands to avoid glass noise. Then time, uh, this smoothing, uh, it sets the time required by a denoiser to reach or release maximum reduction. This is the simplest form of smoothing. And then transition is to adjust how smoothing is applied to neighboring volume levels. So if denoiser recognizes that only noise is present in a certain volume range, the higher you set the transition parameter, the more similar level values are changed in order to avoid glass noise. So you wanna mess around with this. You wanna you want find the right threshold, then how much you want to reduce, and then what type of noise we're reducing. And then once you've got that, you want to then smooth it out with the rest. So in our audio clip, test. One, two, three. Right there, you hear that So that sound that you're hearing, that, that wind noise, is basically baked into your vocals right there. I presently don't know of a way to fix that. So that's something that uh, per perhaps there's a fix out there. The best thing you can do is give Final Cut the best quality audio that you can. That way, instead of trying to fix bad audio and make it okay or even fair, uh, you're giving it good audio that you can make great. You know, garbage in, garbage out. If you bring garbage audio, it's gonna be okay garbage. It's gonna be polished garbage. <laughs> So yeah, you just wanna keep that in mind. You know, there's some things that you can try, like making sure you that you got one of these. Um, for lapels, you know, they've got little tiny ones, uh, like the Rode Wireless Goes. Other lapels will have like little little poofs. So make sure to have a windsock or a dead cat. The other thing you can do is you can get a lapel and you can tape it under your shirt. That way it's not uh, being affected by the wind, but it's still picking up your vocals. And then the other thing you can do is find a new location. If you tend to, to record outside just because it has good lighting. Uh, maybe find another place, uh, invest in some, in some lighting gear. So I would recommend just taking a look at your video, maybe restructuring it so that you don't have to record the audio outside. Maybe the voiceover could be recorded inside and outside you do some simpler things than what you had originally planned. All right, so we took a look at how we can improve windy audio. How some of it may just not be recoverable based on how bad the wind was or whether or not we had a windsock. 
So just keep in mind for your next shoot, a, you know, ways that you can improve your audio, get the, uh, the mic close to your subject, get the mic out of the wind, perhaps restructure your video so that it's not outside. And with that, we've reached the end. Thanks for tagging along. Now that we've cleared that up, I have a free gift for you. It's a pack of Final Cut Pro plugins to enhance your videos and impress your clients. It's worth $138, but it's yours free. Click below to get your free gift.